It was the summer of 80. It was the summer of 1980. It's fucking hotter than hell. Me and Didi are hanging out. And you know what? By the summer of 80, the realization that my mother was dead, it was now a realization. It was like nine or ten months. And every night the sadness would come over me a little bit more every night, you know, like just in a weird way. And one of the stories I told on uh, on Ari, which turned out to be a funny story and some people got pissed off at me, but it was a very true story, was that, you know, like me and Dee Dee were this team that we hustled so much. And in those days we weren't really like house burglars at all. We, we never would even dream of robbing somebody's house. But if there was a drug guy, we would rob their house or try to pull something kinky. But like I said, me and Didi always had our eyes open. And one day we're walking down the fucking street, dog. Walking down the fucking street. And right there, like you can't, like, well, like what are we gonna do for cash? I don't fucking know, what do you think? I don't know. And also, I'm like, what is that crate right there? And we just walked up to it. Like, it could have been anybody's crate. We just walked up to it. And there was like an Ottoman in there, whatever people call that. Autobahn, Autobahn. Like a chair? No, 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 no. Like a thing that you put dishes in and shit. Oh, okay. Like Amor or something? Amor, whatever the fuck it is. And there was no bottom piece for it. And me and Dee looked at him and we're like, what the fuck? This is nice. And we're like, who the fuck would buy this? What are we going to do with it? Where are we going to take this? Do we take this back to the Benders? Do we take this to your house? I mean, either way, we're fucking hoofing. It's a three-block walk either fucking way. And I look up the fucking corner, and that dude, Gunther Brown, lives there. And this was right down the block. We found this in the alleyway of J. Harmon's son, pretty much. Like, that was a truck area. And it just fell off like the back was, of a truck? Like, no, no, no. That was also a place where they did elevators. Like, an elevator tool and die company was there or some shit. When we were growing up, we never robbed them. They had nothing to rob. We didn't know what the fuck a tool or die was. So, uh, we found this thing, and I go, what the fuck are we going to do with this? And it was the block where the Denny's lived and the fucking McNeil's and the fucking Garcia's and and the Jansons and all these families lived on this block. And I'm like, what the fuck am I going to do with this thing? And I go, Dee Dee, I got it. Let's take it to Gunther's house. Because Gunther collected Beatles stuff. All right. So we fucking pick this thing up. Oh, we walk it like 50 yards. It's fucking humid. It's hot. Like That's a, that's what made me remember this. Because it's it, it, I was sweating. I'll never forget we went to Gunther's house. He opens the door with his fucking robe on you know, higher than fuck. And he's like, what's up, guys? And we're like, Gunther, we know you're a Beatle fan. We hate to bother you. We know that you look for stuff all the time. We like to sell you this. And he's like, where the fuck did you guys get this? We go, By that time, we just took it out of the crate and just started walking with it down the street like we were moving men. And, and no one was like, hey, where did these not teenagers... We, not one person. Oh. We walked into Gunther's. We went up, and he goes, I'll take it for sure. What are you guys looking to get? And we're like, 100. He's like, 80. And we're like, done. Could have even been 60. We're like, done. We don't give a fuck. This just gets us a half a gram of Coke. That's all we're looking to get. A half a gram of Coke. We put the beer together. We'll get the re weed together. We could do a half a gram of Coke for 50 fucking bucks. The only problem was, it was the afternoon. Gunther's like, I got something going on here. Can you come back at about 7 o'clock at night? And I'm like, yeah, we'll come back. He goes, no, no, not we'll. Just one of you. He goes, you come back. No offense, Dee Dee. I go, no, no offense. To and that was it. Me and Dee Dee hung out the rest of the day. And that night I went to Gunther's Brown's house. I went over there. He invites me in. He still has the robe on. He's drinking. First off, he, there's this chick. And she's fucking got to be 60. She's all beat up on heroin. And he's telling me, if you go to the bathroom and take a shit... She loves to blow guys when she's, when you're on the toilet. That's oh, her thing. God. And I'm like, no, no, no. No, thank you. I go, no, gee, man, you. I'm cool. Just let me get the cash. 
and let me go to Dee Dee's. In those days, Lee, it was 1980. When somebody offered you a line of cocaine, right? you took it. <laughs> there was no ands, it's, buts about it. Everybody was such a deadbeat for cocaine in those days that anybody who did give you a line, you took it. It could be 2 in the afternoon, it could be 8 in the morning, it could be 11 o'clock at night. In 1980, when somebody offered you a bump, you took it. Because if you went to somebody and said, you're not going to believe what happened. Steve Simone offered me a bump the other night. Everybody in the room was going to go, you fucking asshole. You had a chance to do coke. It was 1980. Nobody really knew what it was. So everybody wanted to do it, but nobody had the $100 to pay for it. Okay. You follow me? So you're, had, so you're gonna say yes. So you say All yes. All your rules go out the window. All your rules go out the window in 1980. So I go, fuck yeah! At that time I did coke. I do a line of coke. He offers me a drink. I go, nah, I gotta go. How old is Gunther Brown? At this time, Gunther's probably 33, oh, 34. No. He's got a robe on. He looks like the guitar player from Black Sabbath. He's got the same mustache. The same type of devilish hair. And then he put music on. Like, I don't know what the first song was he put on. But then in the middle of all this... Endless Love? I don't know what the fuck he put on. He put on like he was like a Beatle fan. And then in the middle of all this, he goes, fuck it. And he goes, have you ever done heroin? And right there, like, my heart stopped. Like, I didn't want to do heroin, but I wanted to do heroin. Oh, Jesus. Like, at that point in my life, I don't know. I was sad. Deep down inside, I had a job. I had money. I was having a fun time, but I missed my mother. This shit of living with people and stuff, as nice as the benders were, it was just rough on me. So I said, you know what, Gunther Brown? Give me a lot of that shit. Even then, you, you wouldn't do the needle? No, no. At that point... A needle in the room, I wouldn't even stick around. At least now I stick around, I just look the other way. It's like ranch on the table for you. Yeah, I just turn around. In those days, a needle, I couldn't even deal with it. Fuck, okay. A needle, I couldn't even deal with So he offered, he offered you a he was He was snorting it too. Okay. He was snorting it too. So that was it. I, I did a little. He goes, do one, see what you think, and then do another one. I'll never forget. He looked at me, he goes, and if you get sick, Run to the bathroom. I go, sick. I was like, Lee Sciatta. I go, why would I get sick? Yeah, that's, uh, like when you were saying you gave, you sold it just for a gram of Coke. It made me think about, like, it was essentially a pawn shop. Like a pawn shop deal. And it's sad that, like, people are so willing to give up, like, 60% of what it's worth. Just to get, like, just because they know that it'll get them some drugs. No, 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 no. See, on the East Coast... In certain neighborhoods, everybody knows that there's a guy in the neighborhood, and it wasn't me. I'm just saying. Okay, gotcha. Everybody knows that there's a guy in the neighborhood that could help you out with stuff. If you need a TV, if you need a washer, dryer. Everybody in the neighborhood in the East Coast has them, from Boston all the way down to fucking Philadelphia. Okay. There's a guy that knows a guy that knows a guy. <laughs> and what that means is that, you know what, maybe you get something 50% off in a box you just can't send in the warranty oh no no I'm, not, I'm talking about like if you were gonna go sell that washer dryer and they're like we'll give you 50 bucks for it and it's worth 400 or whatever it is no 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 but what you do is you already know it's the, it's 200 going in like I don't know what that thing was worth we just walked down the street and bumped into it you know what I'm saying I just bumped into 60 100 bucks if you think I'm gonna walk the thing home and then take the numbers off it and call around and get the retail price. In those days, there wasn't an end to that late. So it wasn't that easy to look prices up and to fucking see what. So you just got what you could. There was plenty of times I went to pawn shops and things like that. Now, you know, when I was scamming, jewelry was 800 an ounce in 1980. Check it and see. For gold? For gold. It was 800 an ounce, 850 an ounce. What the weight for gold was in 1980. 80. Uh, yearly high was $850 and yeah. low is 474 Who the fuck you think you're dealing with in 1980? When it was 850 Oh my god. And look at this. 77 
168 was the high. And 79, it was 524, it jumped. And in 1982, what was it? Let's see here. In 1982, it went down a little bit to 488. 480. And then 84. 84, it went down to 4. 85, it went down to 340. But then it started going up. Uh, oh, my God. In the last the last one on this chart, 2015, and it's up to thirteen hundred and now thirteen hundred. Yeah. Now you show up with a little fucking ring, they give you five hundred. Fuck. My my dad was buying uh wasn't gold. He would buy quarters. Like for the silver. Like we had barrels of quarters in our ba- in our basement for a little bit. Because if they're made before a certain time they have like a hundred they're made with mostly silver. So it, like it is that you, how much of your money was with gold? Me? Yeah. In those days, I worked at Rendell Lumberman. There was a guy named Boji, who was half a gangster, and his day job was to buy gold. He got a, he got their owner Richie Werderman, who was a crooked guy, to give him a stand in there, and he would buy gold. And I talked to him, and he would tell me, "Listen, if you're gonna sell something, this is the time." So I had friends who had friends who had friends, and you know, whenever something they needed to be sold and there was no paperwork on it, I slipped it to Mr. Boji. But the most interesting thing was one time I found a fucking penny in a drawer, and I put it in my pocket. Like, you know when you put change in the drawer and then you go back and take the change out, and you look through the change, and there was like a weird penny. And one time I'm a rental lumber, and I give the penny to Mr. Boji. I go, Mr. Boji, what type of penny is this? He goes, hold on one second. And he gave it back to me. It was worth four eighty. He goes, You want it? Yeah. He gave me four hundred eighty dollars. Jesus Christ. Like shit like that was happening in eighty two. Where's Tony Bennett at? <laughs>